Hi everyone, it's Gina K from Gina K Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a card project that I made with an oldie but goodie stamp set from one of our past Stamp TV kits. Let me show you the tools and products you're going to need to make this card project. First, you're going to need some ink, and the ink colors that I'm going to use are some of the Gina K Designs Ocean Mist, some blue denim, then I'm also going to use a Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad and a Versamark pad. Then I'm going to use some Copic markers, and the Copic marker colors that I'm going to use are YR15, which is pumpkin yellow, B04, which is Tahitian blue, Let's see, this one is BG01, which is aqua blue. I'm going to use B45, which is smoky blue. I'm not sure I'm going to use all of these, but these are the ones I grabbed. I'm going to use the colorless blender pen, possibly. And I'm going to use N1, which is neutral gray one. Then I'm going to use some embossing powder. So I have a big container of the Gina K Designs Fine Detail White because I use it so much. I'm also going to use the embossing magic pad and I'm going to use some tape and I've got a couple of these little thermo web sticky dot runners. I love those. I'm going to use some of the foam squares and then for cardstock, I've got a piece of ocean mist cardstock that I'm using for the card base. I've got some white layering weight cardstock and some blue denim cardstock. And then I have a few, a few white pieces that I'm going to use to stamp on. Then I'm going to use some of these sponge daubers and I'm going to be sponging two colors. So I've got two daubers here. If you haven't used these before, they're really great and easy to use and you can just rinse them out with warm water, squish them into a paper towel and let them dry overnight and they'll be clean and they won't cross contaminate even though they will get stained. So these are fun to use. I have a whole bucket of these. And then I am going to use my Misty. So I'm going to grab my Misty first and I'm going to grab, let's see here, I'm going to grab the stamp set. Now let me show you the stamp set that I'm going to use. So many of you have this stamp set and, and many of you love it. This is the Winter Cheer stamp set and this was a stamp set from one of our um, previous holiday stamp TV kits and it's got these nice trees and it's got some cute snowmen and some fun greetings. Well what we did this year and maybe some of you don't even know this is we have added dies into our store for many of our past holiday sets. So if you have any older Gina K Designs stamp TV kits that didn't have dies check our store because we added about six or seven brand new die sets that coordinate with Christmas sets from the past. So I'm going to use this set and I'm going to use this stamp set. All right, so I'm going to start with the trees here. You can see I have a little bit of foam square stuff there. Okay, so I'm going to use the trees first and I'm going to grab a piece of white cardstock. I'm just going to place the trees onto the white cardstock, but and then I'm going to pick that up using the lid of my Misty. Okay, so now I'm going to place this piece of cardstock into position and I'm going to use my embossing magic pad. And that removes any oils and static on the piece of cardstock that might be there from either lotion or just staticky weather. I want to make sure that still fits with that magnet. I think I'll move the magnet over here that one right up here. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to ink this stamp up using a little bit of Versamark. And I want to get it nice and inky. And if, you've if you're using a brand new set of stamps, make sure you ink it up and then stamp it a couple times before you're actually ready to use it on the project. That will give you a much better impression going forward. There's always a little bit of residue on the, rubber st on the clear stamp from the manufacturing process that needs to just get worked off. I don't recommend sanding or using a nail file or any kind of abrasive on the stamp. Just stamp it a few times first and clean it off and that'll condition the stamp. Okay, so now I have my birch trees. 
I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to grab my white embossing powder. So like I said, I keep this one in a big tub because I use it so often. I use it all year round for all different kinds of emboss resist techniques. And I'm going to sprinkle that all over my trees. And then if there's anywhere you don't want it, you can just brush it away. But it's not really going to matter because I'm going to cut this one down anyway. So even if there's some outside of this little tree line here, I'm just going to cut it away. So now I'm going to heat up my heat gun for just a minute to make sure that it is getting nice and hot. And I will close up my Versamark pad. And now I'm going to heat my design. You'll like the Gina K Designs white embossing powder. It's got a nice fine detail so that you don't lose the little markings in the trees or any of your delicate stamps that you want to use it with. You won't lose the detail and it's a nice bright white. So let's see if you can see that now as I turn it. You probably can see some of the shine there. Okay. So now the next step just give that a second to cool, is to grab some of this Ocean Mist ink and some of the Blue Denim ink. And I'm going to start with the Ocean Mist. And I'm going to have my lightest color coming from the bottom and my darker color coming from the top. I, so this way it's, it's looking like night is falling, but the sun is just still, you just get a little bit of light down here. So that's why I'm cho choosing to go in that order. And I'm just going to start out here and I'm going to just work that in. You can see I'm going all over the place. Doesn't really matter. Like that. And then I'm going to grab some of the blue denim. Get a little bit on my sponge dauber. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to work from the side there. And you can see that it's picking up color onto the embossed images, but that's okay because we're going to wipe that away. All right, get a little darker at the top here. And then blend that a little bit more in the middle, the ocean mist. Okay, so now I have a paper towel and I'm just going to wipe that. You can see that'll just wipe the ink off of the embossing powder. Add a little bit more in here. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my paper cutter. Let me get my little paper cutter. I like this little Tim Holtz paper cutter. I'm going to cut the top off right at the tree line. You can see I just kind of cut all that excess away. Then I'm going to cut it down on the one side. I'm going to cut it at the bottom of the trees. And I'm not worrying too much about measurements yet. And then I'm going to cut it right over here on the side. Okay, so now is where I'm going to worry about measurements because I want this to be a two and a half inch square because I have a piece of uh, blue denim that's going to be a little bit bigger. So this is going to be two, actually this is going to be two and three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to take this one down just to two and five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to cut just a little bit more off of this side. <coughs> And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut it right at, let's see here, two and five eighths. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to trim a little bit off the bottom and then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to make it right at two and five eighths. Let's see how that looks. Two and five eighths, two and five eighths. And now that should layer perfectly with my two and three quarter inch mat that I created for it. So with that being done, 
I am going to tape these two layers together. And this is going to be ready to go on to my next layer. Wait a minute. Sometimes they just, even though it's exactly the same, it just feels like it goes on better the other way. Okay, so there we go. All right, so now my next step for this card is going to be to stamp out these little snowmen. So I'm going to grab both of these little guys, and I'm also going to use this greeting, this little banner that says Merry Christmas. And I'm going to grab a piece of white cardstock to stamp these on. I'm going to start with one little snowman. I'm going to stamp him with some of the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Get a good impression. All right. And then I'm going to stamp the next one again with some Memento Tuxedo Black. You can see I'm getting it all over me. Okay, then I'm going to grab this image, this little greeting here, and I'm going to stamp this one with some of the blue denim. And this is a nice solid image, so you want to make sure that you've got it inked up really well. And I'll just stamp it off the side here because all these are going to get die cut. So you can see how nicely that stamps. I did get a little fuzzy there. There, you can see how nicely, nice and solid our ink stamps. Okay, so before I get to cutting, I'm going to grab a few of these Copic markers. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to color their little noses. And then I'm going to alternate color. I'm going to use some of the aqua blue first because that's real light. So I'm going to color. And again, guys, I am not a Copic coloring expert by any means. So you guys follow some of the best out there in the business, and you probably know how to color a lot better than I do. But I just have fun. That's my whole purpose with card making. I just want it to be fun. And it's fun to learn new techniques, too, for sure. But if you don't know any great techniques, you can certainly just color these with any kind of marker, colored pencil, watercolor, whatever you like to do. But I'm just picking these colors because they seem to match this uh, palette that I'm using here with the blue denim and the ocean mist. They seem to work out well. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of a darker color. So I'm going to use this B04. And I'm going to just add a tiny bit up here along the rim of the hat and also kind of coming down underneath his neck, underneath his chin, like that. I'm gonna do the same thing here and here and here, like that. And again, underneath here, coming down a little bit Okay, then I'm going to go back with that lighter color, the BG01. I'm just going to kind of color over that, just blend it together a little bit. Same with this. Just bring it down a bit. And you can see I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just kind of coloring over those lines to kind of blend them together. All right, and then I'm going to add some of this color. This is the B45, the smoky blue. This one looks kind of nice with our blue denim, so I want to add a little bit of that up into here just to give a little bit of a extra color in his hat. And now I'm going to add a little gray, the neutral gray one just a little bit under his hat there, coming down on the side of his face. Just kind of highlighting his 
his face and underneath going around the scarf. Okay, that's good. That looks good to me. And I did bring the colorless blender over just in case I had a mishap, which I did. You can see I went a little bit outside the lines here, so I'm just gonna rub that away. And that will just absorb up that color. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my my big shot. And for the Gina K designs, you can use any die cutting machine that you want. But I've been using the big shot lately and I've been enjoying it. The cuddle bug works great, the little sister, the the new spellbinders machine, any of those machines will work very well. So let's cut this one out first. And I'm gonna grab that set of dies. Now I occasionally like to use some washi tape to secure things if I feel like I'm going to really move too much. But I think in this case, this will be a pretty easy cut. So I'm going to just line that up, lay my plate on top, and run it through. We'll see what that turned out like. Oh, that looks pretty good. So there's the little banner, Merry Christmas. I'm gonna put that aside with this piece for now. And now I'm just gonna tear this off because that's a little wide for my machine. I'm going to find the two snowmen dies. And I'm gonna cut these guys out. And then I found this fun marker at my office supply store. And now we carry them in our uh, brick and mortar store, but you can probably find them even at Walmart. I found this fun little silver Sharpie marker and I'm gonna color the star with the silver Sharpie. It gives it a little bit of shine. You can also use a glitter pen or a little bit of glitter and glue. So I cut those guys out and now I'm gonna color this one just with that silver Sharpie. You might be able to see the little bit of shine there. Okay, so now I have all these guys ready to go and it's time to build this card. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna use one more thing. I have an embossing folder that I wanna use. So I have this Swiss dot embossing folder. Now, if you haven't done the big shot before, you just flip you flip all of these over and just expose that bottom plate and that's how you use it with embossing folders. So I'm going to emboss this piece of blue denim and I'm, I'm gonna use the Swiss dot folder. It's one of my favorites. You guys see me use it all the time. I like it to line up nicely though. I don't like it to, uh, to be crooked. I like my dots straight and I know a lot of you guys are the same way That'll drive you nuts if it's not straight. So I'll take a minute to line this all up and run it through. And now I am truly done with my big shot. So I will get it out of the way. You guys can see what this looks like. I love that pattern. It's just elegant. You can use it for anything. All right, so now I'm gonna grab these other pieces of my project here, and I'm going to adhere these two pieces together. I'm gonna to do that with a little bit of the ThermoWeb Sticky Dot Runner. Line that up. And then this whole panel is going to go onto my card base. All right, and now it's time to assemble. But you know what? I think this needs something else. Don't you? It just kind of blends right into that background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these dies. I have one of my single stitched square dies, and this is one of the die sets that I designed for ThermoWeb, and I am going to cut that out 
using a piece of white cardstock. So let's do that. We'll cut that out. And I think that's going to make all the difference. It's going to frame it out really nicely. Plus that little stitching is so fun. So there is the single stitch square. See, I lied. I thought I was done with the big shot, but I wasn't. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to put that right in the center there, and that's going to make a huge difference. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then it'll be time to assemble the rest of this. So I'm going to use some sticky dot tape runner to put this right down on the card like that right in the middle and when it comes to lining it up in the middle you can kind of use the dots as your guide make sure you're really in the middle if you lined your cuddle bug folder up right you can use the the dots and then this is going to come down here like this so i'm going to use some of these I'm going to use some scissors to cut a couple of them in half though. I don't need full ones for this. So I will add little half squares. All along here. Four should be good. All right, and we will place this right down here. There we go. That's fun, and I like the dimension that that creates. And now we're going to put these guys on either side. So we'll use a couple of foam squares for these guys, and I'm just going to put them on the one side because there's a lot of layers on this side, and that will kind of even things out a bit. If you have foam squares on this side, he might be pulled up too much. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Put one there and one there. The nice thing about using the foam squares or any kind of foam material is it's still very easy to stick into an A2 envelope and mail without worrying about adding extra postage because it just kind of squishes down. And then when you take it out of the envelope, it kind of puff, puffs back up again. So there is my finished card project. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video. And check out our die section to see all of the new dies that we've added into our store for Christmas. And stay tuned to Stamp TV for more card projects featuring the new Merry and Bright Stamp TV kit. And thanks so much for watching.